Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and I check out a lot of software on this channel. And most of the time when I see things like pre-alpha or experimental, I know what I'm getting. I'm getting a, uh, let's say, concept. Generally not a well-running program, but today's the exception to that rule. We're looking at a new code editor, and quite frankly, it is very usable. Uh, so this is labeled, again, as a pre-alpha and as an experiment, but I was shocked by just how good LAPS actually seems to be. Now, it's pronounced, it's written L-A-P-C-E. I'm going with LAPS for the rest of the video. I might be saying it wrong. I apologize if so. But here you can see it in action. This this is a very Visual Studio Code inspired code editor, and they, they took the best parts of it. It's very fast. It's actually written in Rust. It is open source. I figured since it was written in Rust, I will go ahead and write some Rust code, or at least demo using Rust code. Uh, and as you can see here, here is some Rust from Bevy. Uh, everything has, so you can see here, dot, we got full code completion. You align over top of something like so. Uh, you can also get, eh, bad example, dot. All right, here we go. You go over top of something, you can actually get um, documentation. If it is, there we go. So you can get pop-up documentation for things. If there is documentation available, life language server, you're getting code syntax highlighting, you're getting code completion. The code completion works very well. That was something I was not really expecting again in a pre-alpha piece of software. So if your language of choice is supported, basically if it has um, an active language server of some form, uh, it will probably work well with LAPS. Now on top of that, uh, you'll see over here we've got um, it's file-based, so here I've got a directory open, so you can open up a folder. Again, very much like Visual Studio, you can also create workspaces. This is available for all major platforms, by the way. Uh, you also have a decent amount of control over how things are, are displayed. So for example, we have this tab over here. We can split tabs as many times as we wish. Uh, we can also uh, align things down here. We've got control over that as well, so you can... Um, bring in and out various different elements of the editor. Uh, over here, you'll notice we have GitHub integration, so you can do commits and so on. Over here, you have your various different extensions. So right now, I have a theme extension installed, the Rust language server, and of course, uh, the editor itself seems to be showing up as an extension. So for example, if you want to work with C++ using Clang, you can install it this way. Uh, we've got Python here. We've got a number of different themes available. So let's go ahead and we'll install light pink. Yeah, so now we have another theme available to us. Well, how do I actually go about using these themes. Well, press F1. It's a command palette, just like what you would see in Visual Studio Code. Uh, and then I just type theme, and you see here, change theme. It's gonna bring up my options here. And now I have cute light pink. So now we have, oh, sorry, eye warning, your eyes may bleed. Yeah, a little late. Uh, so you do have full theming support, and I'm going to get off of that theme. So you can see we have a variety of different options. This, I think, is the one that should with out of the box. Um, they are implemented as plugins. Again, all of your commands are via the... Um, the, the command palette. Again, just press F1. You got a list of them right here. Again, everything filters down as you type, as you start typing. Very nice in that regard. You've also got the ability to search through uh, the folders that you're working with. So if I want just RS files, I can search RS. We'll get all of the RS stuff available there as well. Uh, on top of that, you have the settings options over here with this gear. Uh, there are the keyboard shortcuts are all here for you. You can change anything you wish. Uh, there are a number of other settings you can edit with and change and change out the fonts, the font sizes. So I do not know why that Oh, that crashed. Okay, so I'm living up to the pre-alpha aspect of it to a certain degree. Uh, I'll just load it right back up. All right, so here we go. Um, go back here to the settings because there is one other thing I want to show for you. Uh, this is going to appeal to some of you. It is not my cup of tea, but uh, it may be yours. You will notice up here we have Enable Modal Editing Vim Light. So if you'd like, you can come here and you can switch to uh, Vim Mode. By the way, you can also... Um, set the theme here that the UI isn't as nice because there's no uh, drop down. So again, this is under development, but it, it, the, the amount of functionality that just works out of the box at this point in time is quite shockingly nice. So you've got this Vim editing mode. So I'm going to switch back over here. If you ever use Vim, so now I'm in navigation mode. If I want to go into or read mode, if I want to go in and start typing code. So here we've got this this line of there. So I just add X to delete it, deleted the whole line. Or I can hit the I key and now I am in insert mode. So if you are a Vim user, you've got this Vim type mode where you're in like the reader or editing mode. So you see down here, it says I'm in insert mode. I press escape, I'm in normal mode. So if you are looking for a Vim alternative, it is supported directly out of the box. I am not, so I'm going to immediately <laughs> go and turn that setting off. But I know for you Vimmers out there, you will definitely appreciate that, fun appreciate that functionality. The other thing you'll probably notice down here is this guy right here. So this, oops, 
Am I still in? All right, here we go. Uh, so let's say I want to do cargo run dash dash example uh, render to texture. This is the bevy project I'm currently working on. It will go ahead and run that code. So here you can see it running right there. Uh, so you've got an integrated terminal as well. Um, you've got find results down here. You've got your error uh, output down here if you've got integrated with uh, a language that's spitting errors back to you. You've basically got most of what you need here. You get tab editing. Uh, you have uh, your folder navigation over here. You've got a couple other tools here, such as you can connect to a remote SSH host. Uh, you have a ton of options over here in the settings, including that integrated built-in uh, Vim mode. Uh, the only time I've ever actually experienced a crash was what you just saw right there. Uh, you do have control over how your terminal is displayed. You can change all of the key bindings as you wish. Um, you've got control over various different things in the editor, how tabs are shown and so on. Uh, you've got control over the UI itself. And then of course you have um, the ability to turn Vim on and off and so on. Uh, you've also got customized title and you can disable the OS native ones. So let me just go ahead and do that, see what it does. Oh, I'm full screen, so it's not gonna do anything. Here we go. Uh, all right, I'm not seeing a difference on that one. Uh, but you've got nice uh, integration in here. And again, if you're from the uh, Visual Studio world, that F1, the command palette, I think that's just going to become a normal thing in editors going forward. Um, yeah, all of your stuff is available from keyboard. The nice thing about all the, the way that this works, instead of going into the settings menu, you do have a very keyboard-focused environment. So you can do uh, just about like, you know, F1, type what you want, and then boom, go from there. Um, I, yeah. I, I don't really know what else to say. The Laps is a, a pretty nice project. There's a there's some uh, uh, plugins available for it right now. Obviously, that is fairly early. If you're interested in learning more about it, it is available at lapce.dev. I will have that in the linked article down below. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, it is available for a variety of platforms, that variety being Linux, Mac, and Windows. Uh, there is a portable and um, installed version for Windows. You can see there their um, selling points of laps are it's lightning fast uh, so it's got uh, GUI and GPU acceleration using the Rust language so there shouldn't be any lag on keystrokes it should just go boom uh, it's remote development support uh, we saw that there's an SSH connection as well uh, there as well code syntax highlighting using tree center much faster and better than regex based highlighting you also got built-in uh, language server uh, LSP so basically any any language within um, language processing you can integrate with get code completion and so on um, so you get intelligence, IntelliSense, diagnostics, code actions, so on. That's where we also saw the dynamic help coming from. Uh, we've got Vim-like modal editing, if you wish. It's directly integrated, not a plugin. So if you are from a Vim background, you can turn it into basically a Vim light with just one option in the settings. Uh, there is a plugin system available. You can use um, whatever language you wish as long as it uh, works with WASI. And it's got a built-in terminal as well. As I mentioned off the hop, this is also an open source project. Uh, so it is under the Apache 2 license, which is very liberal in what it allows you to do. As you may have noticed from the instructions, this is a Rust project, so all of the code is in Rust. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, that's laps, laps, I guess. Uh, again, it's marked as pre-alpha stage, and it's marked as experimental. And with the exception of the one crash we saw today, I haven't had any crashes. It's worked fine. Uh, the coding experience for, um, I, I only used it with Rust so far, but you're getting full um, syntax highlighting and completion and code hints and everything else that I would like. Uh, it's got the built-in terminal window. It's kind of like a lightweight Svelte version of Visual Studio Code. And I think a lot of people like Visual Studio Code, but it's starting to get a little bit bigger. And it's also built on Electron. Uh, and this is not. This is built on top of Rust, and it gives you a very mature experience. I'm actually shocked at how good this performed for pre-alpha software. So I would actually highly recommend going ahead, checking it out, uh, giving it uh, a shot, especially if you're using, say, C++, um, Rust, Python. Those are all uh, easily supported out of the box with plugin support right now. Uh, it's, it's an interesting looking uh, code editor. Uh, again, it is very fast. Uh, and it just seems to work. So uh, check it out. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.